He's going to give the executive summary of the project that they've been doing there. Thank you. So, thanks to Ala and Pakum for a nice introduction, so I can go briefly through some things. So, I'm sure you all know now the basics of global navigation satellite systems. So, at present, they work like this. The user receives uh, clock information from four satellites and also the orbital information about their orbital parameters. These are determined by ground tracking, as also Anna explained. And from this, we know at a given time, the clock tells us where the satellite is, and from this we can deduce where uh, our user is, user position. So we need, of course, four satellites because we have four uh, dimensional problems. So we have three space coordinates and one temporal uh, coordinate to determine. And at present, uh, GNSS uh, treats uh, space-time as absolute. Space is absolute and time is absolute. And as Pakom mentioned, there are several problems because of mm -hmm. that with reference frames, and also that uh, we need to add all relativistic effects. We, have, we need to add these uh, corrections to this. So the alternative approach would be to describe the system in general relativity. And in relativity, space and time are not absolute, but uh, we have each satellite's time is running at its own pace. So we, we call this proper times. And uh, although they're running at different paces, they uh, uniquely determine each uh, determine the position of its satellite along the orbit. So from here on, uh, we can say that the problem is very similar. Instead of uh, if we want to determine position of the, our user, instead of using x, y, z, and t coordinates, we can use proper times or emission times of these satellites. So the time. Uh, the proper times of these satellites at the time of the emission of the signal. So these are here marked with cows. And if we have this, so this times tell us, plus the orbital parameters that we know from ground tracking, can tell us where the satellite is along its orbit again, and from this we can deduce then the user's position. So the advantages of these emission coordinates using these proper times are that these are physical quantities which can be measured on board. Uh, they are independent of any terrestrial reference frames. Uh, all the relativistic effects are already naturally included in this, uh, and there is no need to synchronize satellite clocks. We just let them run uh, at their own pace. Uh, now we can imagine that if we have a receiver on board, for example, if the one satellite has a receiver on board, uh, it cannot, it not just broadcasts its own time, but it also receives time, proper times from other satellites. So if it has its own time and it receives proper times from three other satellites, it can determine its own position. It's like a user. Uh, but if we go one step further and say, let's, let's take two satellites, which are not just at one given point, but continuously or along the orbit, for, let's say for some time, maybe several orbits, they're communicating their proper times to each other. Uh, from this, we can have, for example, it looks like this. So uh, each satellite orbit, and there we have these pairs of proper times. One is emitting, the other one is receiving. So from these pairs of proper times, which they receive along the orbit, uh, it is possible to deduce orbital parameters of these satellites. Urus will tell us more about this. But this tells us that we do not need uh, ground tracking because the satellites can figure out by themselves what are their orbital parameters, what orbits they are. Uh, and this, this is what we call the autonomous basis of coordinates. So these satellites determine this uh, reference frame. <coughs> the advantages of this are that such a uh, system is very robust. We can have uh, redundant satellites. For example, if we have two satellites, this is already working. If we have more satellites, we have three, four, or even more, we can check the consistency of results uh, and so on. Uh, it is very stable and accurate, like also the concept that uh, these satellite orbits are very stable, and uh, they can bring many applications into science. In science. So, as it was mentioned earlier, this uh, idea was first developed further in the Ariadna project. There were two projects in which uh, the gravitational field around the Earth, the space-time around the Earth, was considered as if the Earth is uh, the only object, so isolated Earth, and spherically symmetric. In the first uh, Ariadna project, 
it was shown that this relativistic positioning system works, so it, that there is no limitation in the accuracy if we transform from the normal x, y, z to the, this proper the emission coordinates. And then uh, in the next uh, Ariadna project, uh, uh, it was shown that if we put uh, that they simulated inter-satellite things and uh, this orbital parameter determination from the pairs of uh, proper times. So it was shown that this ABC concept works. Of course, this uh, first thing that the assumption that the Earth uh, gravitational field is spherically symmetric is not a uh, really correct one. So the second, the continuation was that we treated a more realistic case. We said Earth is not spherically symmetric and there are also other celestial bodies present which can influence the motion of satellites, for example, the Moon, Sun, and so on. So we included all gravitational perturbations which we thought were relevant. So Earth multipoles, as you see from this plot, Earth multipoles, Moon, Sun, uh, tides, relativistic effects are already included, then Venus and Jupiter, and then even further down here is the so-called Kerr effect, which is due to the rotation of the Earth, and we also included that one. Uh, and we asked ourselves, ourselves, do positioning and ABC concepts still work uh, if we have these perturbations uh, present? So in work, work package 4.1, uh, we built a mathematical scheme for including all these uh, relevant perturbations to in terms of general relativity. Then we use this scheme to, uh, in the, to calculate satellites uh, orbit, uh, orbits in work package two. And we treated the problem like assuming that certain constants of motion, some certain parameters, orbital parameters like uh, major arc axis or some things like that are not constant now anymore, but are changing slowly due to perturbations, so that we have slow uh, time evolution of these parameters. Uh, and then in work package 3, we first simulated if a user on the ground and see if, it, uh, if the positioning still works. And we found that it works. We found that mathematically the relative accuracy in position and time uh, that we can achieve are very high. These numbers are <laughs> very extreme, one would say, they would mean that we can uh, uh, determine position of the user to the atom size, which is of course ridiculous, but of course these are theoretical limits, of course there are other uh, problems which may uh, worsen this, but uh, there we just showed with this that uh, there are no limitations in the numerical programs or the theoretical background. Uh, then we uh, simulated the ABC system, so we let inter the satellites communicate between each other, and uh, we said that initially <coughs> these satellites don't know their orbital parameters very accurately, and then we uh, use these pairs, they are communicating and using these pairs of proper times. Uh, we found that it was possible to refine the orbital parameters of uh, both satellites to very, again, very low number, so the relative accuracy is uh, 10 to the minus 22, which is again a uh, very small number. So, but the basic idea is that we show that this uh, works, so the orbital parameters can be very accurately determined. Uh, we also looked for if there are some degeneracies between the parameters, for example, or between one and the other satellite, and we found none uh, the generous is because we think this is due to the uh, this new due to gravitational perturbations. Our problem is now no longer spherically symmetric. <coughs> and then in work package four, we ask ourselves similarly as Pacom was explaining, is it possible to measure now the gravitational field in the vicinity of the Earth so, and refine gravitational parameters? For example, is it possible to refine uh, multiples or measure tides? or presence of the moon, uh, and so on. Uh, we found that theoretically, yes, because uh, this action as about which uh, Uroj will tell us uh, more in his presentation, has a very well-defined minimum. So minimum is where the, the values are accurate. Uh, but we had some problems uh, 
with uh, high accuracy, because of the high accuracy of our calculations, they became very slow, and we also had some problems with the finding uh, proper minimization methods to get us to find this minimum which is present. But Urus will also tell us more about this. This is just, for example, how accurately one could determine uh, rotation parameters. For example, uh, the distance to the, um, to the moon can be determined to relative accuracy to 10 to the minus 21. Again, very low numbers, but it just tells us that theoretically there are no limitations. And of course, this can mean that there can be several scientific applications coming from this. So to, summary, uh, to summarize our results, uh, uh, we find that such relativistic positioning and the ABC concepts are uh, feasible, accurate, and stable also in the presence of gravitational perturbations. Uh, that it is theoretically possible to measure also the gravitational field uh, of the Earth and nearby celestial bodies, uh, which can bring us various scientific applications. But the main points are that this uh, accuracy, stability, and lower costs uh, of such a system, because we don't need any ground tracking. The link between the, uh, this reference frame, the ABC reference frame, and the uh, Earth can be established just by putting several receivers at the non-terrestrial positions. So if we know, so we have the system, our Earth is somewhere in the system, and by putting several receivers, we know where in this system our Earth is. And then this can be used to determine also other positions uh, on the Earth for the user. Uh, <coughs> there is no need to synchronize clocks. And uh, this is independent, robust, and consistent, such a system. So we think it is a very promising uh, this concept, and we think that there are several possible next steps that it would be nice to take. So first is to, obviously, that uh, we had problems with, was to study uh, suitable methods for minimization, which also Uros will show. Uh, also to study influence of non-gravitational perturbations, which were not, not included in these uh, studies until now. Uh, and then perhaps, this is just an idea test, on the, do some tests on the real satellite data. For example, if we know how the satellites are uh, um, moving, then we could try to model this with our approach, see if it works, and if there are some residuals, can this be residuals due to non-gravitational perturbations, so this is uh, one idea. Then <coughs> also maybe on more practical terms to study how one can, could test this idea before putting this on the GNSN system, for example. Uh, so one would maybe just put it on two Galileo satellites receivers because two satellites are enough to see this, uh, if this ABC concept works. So what would be needed uh, on the ground and on board? Or how to test this before that, perhaps maybe on a system of small satellites, which would orbit and communicate. Um, perhaps there is some uh, way to that we could test this concept also on the ground for putting them on satellites. So if you have any uh, ideas, you're most welcome. So right. Thank you.